God bless you, God bless you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together with a fellowship, with a joy divine. All of us leaning on his everlasting arms. Come on, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity now for worship, this opportunity to gather together both far and near. Thank you, Father, for the fellowship. Thank you, Lord, for the body of Christ, the beloved, the kingdom. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Thank you for it your Holy Spirit sealed until the day of redemption. Thank you uh, for new life. Thank you for Easter. Uh, we celebrate the, the, the crucifixion, but not just the crucifixion, the resurrection also. Thank you, Jesus, for all thy blessings, your goodness, food, clothes, shelter, transportation, money. Bless us tonight, Lord, as we enter into the scriptures. Open up these words, Lord. Open up the Bible and let this word become flesh, but not just flesh, Lord. Let us let, let this word quicken us. Let it quicken us and strengthen us. Bless, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Good to see you. It's good to be in God's house. Amen, amen. It's good to be in your house. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. You are the church. Amen. You are the building. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to City of Zion. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. There it is. That quick. Y'all and jumped on in the chat. Amen, amen. Donna, amen. Now, this is the earliest I've never seen Donna. God bless you, Don. I see you. God bless you. Yeah, Earlene, I saw you at Bible study. Dietra, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Dietra got a concert coming up, y'all. Dietra got a concert on Sunday. On Sunday. Liberty and Justice for All, Washington Douglas Corral at the National Presbyterian Church. You're looking for something to do on Sunday? This is a ticketed event. Amen. You got to uh, give Dietra a call. Inspired by Duke Ellington, April the 14th. That's on, that's Sunday? Is April the 14th Sunday? Yeah. Yes. April the 14th. That's Sunday. Yeah, that's Sunday. April the, April the 14th. Amen. Dietra, our own Dietra, will be in concert. Give her a call. Reach out to her. National Presbyterian. Dietra, is this a ticketed event? I think you sent me an email that said it's a ticketed event. Put that in my chat. Amen. And she will be having a solo in that event. Amen. God bless you. Deidre, amen. Margie, Buenos Noches, my sister. Buenos Noches, Margie. Good to see you. Charles Bell, God bless you, man. Vicky Bell, Vicky Bell, Vicky Bell. Amen. God bless you, my sister. Good to see you. Deborah, I see you. God bless you. Earlene, yeah. uh, Devin, uh, my, 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 my new Jack, young man. God bless you, brother. Arlene Pringle, good evening. Corey, little girl, little girl. Amen. God bless you. Is Corey a senior this year? Is Corey? Next year, okay, Corey. God bless you. You on the you on the amen. You, you, you wait, wait, wait. No, Corey's a senior. Put that in my chat, Corey. Her and Asaya, okay. God bless you. All right, I'm trying to figure it out, Corey. Amen. Yvonne Arango, that's Philadelphia. God bless you. Good to see you, Alvira. I see you. Good evening. Good evening. Deacon is Naisha. Yes, God bless you. God bless you, Edna Riddick. Yeah, Deaconess Fonda, I see you. Karen Grady, yeah, and that was your son on, uh, was it Sunday? Wavy something. Wavy. Put that in the chat, uh, uh, Karen. It was, uh, but I believe that was your son. Wavy something. Amen. All right, amen. Charles Webb, God bless you. Ruth Pender, yeah, saw you at Bible study. Glenn West, I see you. God bless you, brother Steve. Angela, God bless you. God bless you. I see you. Lynette, there you go. Amen, amen. God bless you. I see all of you. That's right. Corey Webb is a senior. I knew that was right. She's a senior. Amen. Remember, she's homeschooling. She's on a different schedule. She's, a, she's homeschooling. I knew she was a senior. Amen. Uh, Carolyn, yeah, Bible study. I see you. God bless you, Carolyn. And that's uh, Mia. Amen, Mia. Good to see you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Yes, Corey is graduating this year. All right. That, man, I got a senior. Oh, my. That's right. I got to get you a Bible. Amen. I got to get, amen. Seniors, I get them Bibles. That's right. I'm going to get you a Bible. Let me know what color you want. Amen. Because uh, Surveyor, did I get her a pink Bible? Got her a pink Bible. Had me going all over town, all over the place to find a pink Bible. Working me like that. I don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate it. Amen. Let me know, Corey, what color Bible you want. Purple, pink. Let me know what color Bible you want. Amen. Taryn, I see you. God bless you. Amen. Y'all forgive me. I'm just happy, glad. I, I love the saints. God bless you. I've been praying for you. 
Amen. And I'm praying, amen, God's blessings upon you. Amen. Did y'all see the eclipse on, uh, what day was that? Was today's Wednesday? Was it Monday? It was Monday, the, the eclipse. Yeah. Did y'all see the eclipse? Did y'all see it? Amen. Amen. It was, a, it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, the world came together. The world came together. People were uh, traveling. Amen. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm very sensitive to it because Cleveland was one of the uh, was one of the total eclipse cities. Total eclipse. We didn't get it here the way the, uh, uh, some other places got it. The eclipse for us was only partial. But the real eclipse, listen, watch this. The real eclipse, uh, and I have family members in Cleveland. Matter of fact, it was so big in Cleveland, my sister works for the government. She works for city government. They shut down. My brother works for the VA, Veterans Association, Veterans Administration, shut down. That's how big it was. I mean, they, it was huge. And watch this, for it to be a real eclipse for you to really feel it. Think about, think, imagine being outside, broad daylight, broad daylight, the sunshine, and then all of a sudden it goes, it goes pitch black, like nighttime. See, that's the real impact of the eclipse. And in certain cities, Cleveland was one of the cities where they experienced the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, it was a big event. It was a, it was a huge event. It was a huge uh, event. Yep, Erlene, I saw it. God bless you. Yeah, you can see it here, but uh, you looked up. Um, I mean, you know, it didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't earth shaking. Yeah, I mean, you know, matter of fact, you ain't supposed to look at it straight on anyway, but uh, it was a big event. It was a big event for some people. It was a big event for some people. And uh, like I said, people uh, travel from all over the world. And for some, it was a spiritual event. For some, it was a spiritual event. Um, and uh, did it have any real biblical significance? Uh, not directly, not directly, not directly. The, the Bible talks about the moon and becoming blood red. The Bible talks about uh, the sun being darkened. I told you on Sunday, there were some occasions when the sun was darkened. When, when Jesus was being crucified, the sun went dark. Um, there are some e events in the Bible, uh, but specifically there are future events. There's one event in Revelation, I believe it's 16. I think I mentioned this Sunday. Let me mention it again. Revelation chapter 16, verse 10. Revelation 6, 16, 10. Now, this is during the tribulation period. The church is not on earth. We'll be up in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. This is during the tribulation period, during the period of hell on earth, when the wrath of God is poured out on the earth. There is going to be an eclipse. Revelation chapter uh, 16. Revelation chapter 16. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. And some expositors say that's going to be the, the city of Babylon, Babylon. There's going to be a new Babylon during tribulation, during the tribulation time. There's going to be a new world headquarters. and It's going to be Babylon, Babylon. Uh, Revelation chapter 16, verse 10. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. Men gnawed their tongues in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pain and their sores. But they refused to repent. They refused to repent of what they had done. Some suggest that's going to be an eclipse. That's going to be an eclipse. So, yeah, eclipses, they are mentioned. We see some in the Bible. That does not have any real significant biblical uh, impact. Uh, but, but it is a teachable moment. It, it, you can use it as a teachable moment. Amen. I, I use the text Psalm 8, Psalm 8. When I consider your heavens the work of your uh, fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. I mean, if you want a teachable moment for the kids, the babies, people, like I say, people are traveling all over the world. Uh, uh, people, they felt uh, it was mystical. I heard some people say, yeah, this is uh, it's, it's magical, it's mystical, it's spiritual. Okay, amen, that's, that's all right. Ain't no, no, I, I, ain't mad at, I ain't mad at you. It should help you, watch this, it should help you to realize that God is real. If you want to take something from it, if you want to have a teachable moment from the eclipse, and it was a big event, it was a big deal, it should remind you that God is real. Psalm 8, Psalm 8, verse, uh, well, 1, 2, and 3. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. You know, Vinny, that's a song, Richard Smallwood. He put that to music. That's why I like Richard Smallwood. I like Richard Smallwood. He'll take Psalm, he'll just take it right out the Bible and make, make a song. I like I like Richard Smallwood. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast uh, ordained strength 
because of thine enemies, and thou that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Here's what I want, verse 3. When I consider thy heavens, people were watching and they were looking and buying glasses, and you had people on uh, uh, TV and radio trying to explain what was happening. They were talking about uh, the, the, uh, the science, and they were talking about how the moon was blocking the sun and how this was not going to happen for another 20 years. And, and they were talking about all the science that was involved. It could not be coincidence. It could not be happenstance. Could not be coincidence. Couldn't be happenstance because of the precision, because of, uh, of everything that was involved. Why, look at what the, the, the psalmist, this is Psalm 8. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, when I look at all this, it can't be an accident. This is not a coincidence. So what does that mean? This, 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 all of this creation, this all heavens, the moon, the stars. Here's the answer in the Bible. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. Who is the you? That's God. That's God. There it is, beloved. If you don't take nothing else from this. Amen. Amen. It's not a big bang. It didn't just happen. No, 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 no. Amen. Creation means there is a creator. That's all it means. Creation means that there is a cre it reminds us that God is real, that God exists. Amen. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we celebrate the, the eclipse. Yeah, it was a big deal. Amen. But it, it uh, I'll say it like the Bible says. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. Amen. We give God praise. We give him the glory. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, again, again. Now, it's, it's interesting. Also, the eclipse was a big, big deal for. For astrologers, witches, and warlocks. Astrologers, witches, and warlocks. Google this. Vet me on this also. A whole hundreds and thousands of people also, they got married on Monday. They got married. Vet me on this. Amen. Hundreds and a whole bunch of people got married on Monday. They used the eclipse for whatever reason. For whatever reason. They got married on Monday. Uh, Monday, and then uh, I, I read a lot of reports about astrologers, because you remember astrologers, they read the stars and the moon. Isn't that right? Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. Amen. Don't act like you don't know. What's your sign? What's your sign? Some of y'all remember. Some of y'all had that gold chain. Some, some of y'all had that gold chain. Amen. Your, your zodiac sign. Amen. Come on. Don't forget. Don't forget now. Amen. Amen. We used to read them horoscopes and uh, 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 astrology, all that stuff. Every day. You used to read that stuff every day, but thank God we don't do that no more. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. We don't do that no more. We know better now. We know better. Amen. We don't follow after astrology anymore. Amen. No, 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 no. We know better now. Amen. Amen. God has God has uh, 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 redeemed us. He pulled us out of that. He pulled us out of that. But astrology, yeah, all of that, see, that's based on that's based on the stars. Yeah, that's based on that's based on uh, the the heavens. Yes, the uh, the the people that, that write your astrology and they write your horoscopes and all of that. Yeah, the moon and all that stuff. There is significance to that. Turn to Isaiah 47 very quickly. Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47. Astrology. So and one reason a lot of people got married, one reason a lot of people got married during the eclipse, the lunar eclipse. Well, they were following after astrology. They were following after astrology. Turn over to Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47. But thank God we've been delivered from that. Come on, say amen. 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 We know better now. We know better. It's one thing when you're a child, when you're young, when I'm a child, I think as a child, I act as a child, I behave. Oh, yes, you brag. I used to be, oh, yeah, I'm a Leo. I'm Leo the lion. I used to tell them that all the time. When I would get in the fights and cuss folk out, I'm like, well, you know, Leo's, that's how we get down, you understand? Le Leo's, that's how we get down, you understand? It's a, it's, a, it's a Leo thing. You don't understand. You know, amen. We use that to make excuses, but we know better now. Come on, say amen, somebody. Isaiah 47, Isaiah 47. Mm -hmm. Keep on then with your magic spells, with your sorceries, which you uh, have labored at since childhood. Amen, amen. Don't, don't be ashamed now and don't lie about it. This is what we used to do. Amen, amen. amen. And again, the, that's okay. The Bible says when I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned as a child. I behaved as a child. 
Amen. 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 That's what that's amen. We that's 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 that, we were all caught up in, into that stuff. Amen. Uh, but look at verse 13. All the counsel you have received has only worn you out. Let your astrologers highlight circle on the line that astrology is in the Bible. Float on. Look at the other way. What? 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 Hold up. Hold up. Wait. Wait. Is it Wednesday? Is that Elder Webb? He. So he one of the floaters. He in the band. He in the group. He Larry. He Larry. Look at look at Elder, Elder Webb floating. Lord have mercy. Look at verse 8, 13, y'all. All the counsel you have received has only worn you out. Let your astrologers come, even in the King James Bible, even in the King James Bible. Let now the astrologers, stargazers, monthly prognosticators. See, that's all that has to do with the heavens and the stars and, and, and reading the, how the, where the moon is or where the planets are. Uh, a line and all that. There is something to that. There is something to it. Yeah, there's something to it. But watch this. Christians not supposed to do that. I say Christians. Amen. Yeah, there's something to it. Amen. But watch this. I'm gonna show it to you. Amen. No, 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 no. Christians, we don't we don't do astrology. Not 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 those that, that don't team Jesus. Come on, keep reading. Those stargazers who make predictions month by month. Amen. I had relatives, they would have books. They would have books, and you would read that book for the whole month. Had dates on it and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, there's a science to it. There's a science to it. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. Surely they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. Yeah, they cannot even save themselves from the power of the flame. Yeah, here are no coals to warm anyone. Here is no fire to sit by. That is all they can do for you. These you have labored with and trafficked with since childhood. Since each of them goes on in his error. That flame is talking about the flame of hell that's coming, by the way. That flame is talking about the flame of hell. See, because it's demonic. Verse 12 talks about magic, magic spells. Stand now, King James says, the enchantments, witches, warlocks, astrologers. All of that is in the same category. Witches, warlocks, astrologers is all in the same category, and it's sin for a Christian. When you don't know better, amen, that's one thing, but when you know better, you're supposed to do better. Astrology, horoscope, all of that, it's sin for Christians. There's a verse um, in Daniel that I like. Yeah, there's a verse in, in Daniel that I like. Now, again, when you did no better, amen, that was fine. When you did no better, amen, we, we, we understand. But again, when you know better, you're supposed to do better. Did you hear what I said? When you know better, you it's one thing if you didn't know, but watch this. Amen. When you know better, you're supposed to do better. I like this verse in Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. Amen. King had a dream and it troubled him. It troubled him and he needed an interpretation for the dream. Needed an interpretation for the dream. So he called all of his Witches and warlocks and astrologers, magicians, he called all of them. Look at what happened. Daniel chapter 2, verse 27. Daniel chapter 2, verse 27. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, there it is again, highlight circle on the line. It's in the Bible, y'all. Is it Wednesday night? Can we go a little bit deeper tonight? I say it's in there. It's in the book. It's in the book, y'all. God's word speaks, talks about everything. You just got to know where it is. Oh, yeah. And see, in this, these last days, there's more occult activity. There is more demonic activity. I ain't never seen so many movies now on the occult. You go to the movie theater right now. When I was uh, up at the mall the other day, and I just looked. Like, four out of the ten movies, witchcraft, astrology, they had this one, The Omen. They had another one on this chick getting pregnant, I guess because it's Easter time, too. I mean, just witchcraft and astrology, witchcraft and, and the satanic and the demonic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's going to be an increase in occult activity in these last days. So that's why I want you to get in front of it. Daniel chapter 2, verse 27. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secrets uh, which the king have demanded, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the mag magicians, the soothsayers, uh, can't they show, show it unto the king? No, they can't. That's why they called me. That's why they called Daniel. Uh, look at what he said. 
Verse 20, 28, this is what I love. But there is a God in heaven yes, yeah, that revealeth secrets yeah, or mysteries. Yeah, King James says, yes, secrets. NIV says, but there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. We don't read the horoscope anymore. We don't do Ouija boards, tarot cards, palm readers, not saving sanctified people. Go ahead and put the number up. It's 722. Go ahead and put the number up. But I feel it already. Put the number up. Christians don't do that. Amen. Soothsayers, palm readers, witchcraft. Amen. Amen. You got people, they throw sticks on the ground and they read where the sticks land. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what witches, they, they read where the sticks land. Pull, drawing lots. Drawing lots. It's all kind of stuff. And especially coming out of the, the, the Caribbean and Bahamas and Haiti and Jamaica, all that stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All kind of crazy stuff. Uh-uh. I mean, I understand the culture and I understand the history and I understand African people, African diaspora used to do that stuff. Fine, wonderful. Guess what? Hey, Amen. We saved now. We know Jesus. Amen. We got Jesus now. Amen. We got, come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. I understand your heritage and I'm not I'm not I'm not demonizing your heritage, but we know better now. We know better now. When you know better, you do better. When you know better, we do better. We have a God. I got that Daniel chapter two. I love that. I love just the verbiage of that. The King James. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter day. There it is. Amen. So, that's what we're doing right here. We, we, we're, we're allowing the Lord to lead and to guide us. Amen. No witchcraft, no hoodoo. Uh-uh, no witchcraft, no hoodoo. In Jesus' name, God bless you. All right, this is what I'm going to do tonight. We're doing lessons from Easter. I'm still in my Easter uh, season. I'm still in the overflow of Easter. Amen. Last week, I gave you the Passion Week, the schedule of what happened during Holy Week. I told you about the triumphant entry. I told you, I took you from Sunday to Sunday. Amen. I talked about the various events. So, so what I'm doing now, I'm pulling from Easter. I'm pulling from Easter. I'm pulling from Easter week. I'm pulling from the crucifixion. I'm going to talk about the crucifixion. I'm going to talk about the seven last words when he was there. I'm going to talk about the 40 days. Some of the most powerful teachings in the Bible come from this period of time. So I'm going to take my time and walk through it. I'm going to take my time and walk through it. Amen. I want to say hello to Anita Negron. Uh, some people, they called and had prayer requests. They saw the broadcast. So if y'all out there, Anita Negron, she asked me to pray. Amen. She sent in the prayer requests. Amen. They fill out prayer requests online, but now they call it. So I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Amen. When you got a need, amen, you, you call long distance. I ain't mad at you. I ain't, mad. I ain't mad at you. That's why Jesus didn't, you know, people would come up to Jesus and the disciples would push him away, push him away, push him away. Look at here. When you got a need, what you say? Don't get between me and the Savior now. I'll knock you out the way. What did what it say? She couldn't get to him, so she started crawling. She couldn't get to him? He said, if I can just touch. Huh? The what? The the hem is on the bottom last time I checked. Woo. Had some folk call long distance. Anita uh, Negron, forgive me if I said your name wrong, Anita. Alan Peterson and his wife, Jill. God bless you. I got it. Look, they, that's from Illinois. Called from Illinois. I got the message. I hear you, man. God bless you. He said, pray for my wife, pray for my kids, pray for everybody. So we praying for you. God bless you. God bless you. If y'all out there, jump in my chat and say something. But God bless you. I know I got people that watch and they don't type nothing in there. So I, I hear you. God bless you. Praying for all of you. Praying for you. Praying for you. We're going to talk about Passion Week. And today what I'm going to jump into, I'm going to jump into the upper room. On Thursday, he, he went to the upper room and he started teaching on Thursday. Thursday of Holy Week. Thursday of Holy Week. Yeah. Thursday of Holy Week. I'm at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when the disciples came unto him to call his attention to the building. So, yeah, Jesus, he was teaching. He was teaching on, let me see. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Thursday is the upper room. That's communion. I'm sorry. I, I said it wrong. You're not wrong. I said it wrong. I'm on Tuesday. Tuesday is the Olivet Discourse. Tuesday is the Olivet Discourse. Amen. He cursed the, the fig tree on Monday. On Tuesday, it, uh, it was withered. Tuesday afternoon. Uh, he, he, he teaches 
They also anointed him for burial. The woman with the alabaster box with, with, the, with the perfume. Yeah. Um, so also he, he teaches what's called the Olivet Discourse. Why is it called the Olivet Discourse? Well, he was over there by the Mount of Olives. Yes, he was by the, the Mount of Olives. Let me see if I can find it here. Matthew 24. Yes, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when the disciples came up, up, up to him to call his attention to the buildings. Do you see all these things? He asked. I tell you the truth. Not one stone will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Now, if you look at Mark, if you look at Mark 13, I want you all to see where I'm coming from now. Why we call it the Olivet Discourse. Mark chapter 13. Now, this is during Holy Week. This is during Holy Week. This is on that Tuesday. This is on that Tuesday mm -hmm. as he was leaving the temple. Amen. Because early on Tuesday. Yeah, he was uh, he was he was teaching. That's when the Pharisees challenged his authority. You know, they were pushing back against him and uh, he, he called them hypocrites. He called them. Uh, 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 you're like snakes and vipers and all of that. Yeah. So he, here's Mark chapter 13. As he was leaving the temple, one of the disciples said to him, look, teacher. The massive stones, the magnificent buildings. He was looking at the temple, looking at the temple. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Jesus prophesied here what's going to happen. This happened in 70 AD. Prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. Jesus predicted a future event. Jesus predicted a future event. It happened 70 AD. 70 AD, amen, Titus, the Romans came in and destroyed Jerusalem. Destroyed Jerusalem. Verse three, verse three, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, this section is called the Olivet Discourse because he taught from the Mount of Olives. That's why it's called the Olivet Discourse. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James and John, Andrew asked him privately, tell us when will these things happen? What will be the sign that these things are about to happen? Be fulfilled. He talks about the signs of the times. Oh, yeah, this is real good. One of my favorite subjects, one of my favorite Subjects come back to Matthew 24, sign of the time. Yeah, before Prince sang about it, amen, God talked about it. Before Prince, I ain't mad at you, I ain't mad at you, amen, amen. Prince was a genius, he's a musical genius. Amen, I don't understand the high heels and all that stuff. All that other stuff, walking around in women's underwear and all that other stuff, amen. Y'all know he was a Jehovah's Witness before he died? He was a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Larry Graham pulled him in. And Larry Graham used to play the bass guitar for, uh, ooh, what's that guy's name? Crazy dude. He was always high. He came around uh, during Woodstock. Uh, 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 who did Larry Graham play for? Somebody put that in my chat. Find out, I know you know. Amen. Find a, find a, tell me who Larry Graham used to play the bass for. Uh, what is his name? It'll come to me. Amen. He's a crazy sinner. He used to always get high. And he came around during Woodstock. But Larry Graham, amen, took Prince under his wing. And, and Larry Graham is Jehovah's Witness. So he pulled Prince in under that. He pulled Prince in under that. Uh, that ain't a good thing. Sly, there it is. Who, who gave me that? Karen. Karen. God bless you, Karen. I didn't know you get down like that. All right, Karen. God bless you. That's right. Sly and the Family Stone. Larry Graham used to play the bass guitar for Sly and the Family Stone. There it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, yeah, he was a uh, uh, Sly. He was, uh, he died. He, matter of fact, Sly Stone, they found him. He was homeless on the streets in California. If he's still, if he's still alive. Somebody check and see if he's still living. I don't know if he's still living. He might be dead, but it's Sly and the Family Stone. But Larry Graham used to play for him. Larry Graham took Prince under his a uh, mentorship and then prince became uh uh he became a jehovah's witness which was which was very strange to me very strange to me and uh not rick james no 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 it wasn't rick james it wasn't rick james it was sliding the family stone like i say woodstock that time period that time period well well prince also had a song uh sign of the times he also had a song prince was very spiritual he was very spiritual wrong spirit but he was very spiritual wrong spirit I said wrong spirit, but you know, he was very spiritual. And you notice these artists, they try to be spiritual. Kanye trying to start a church, trying to start a church. Yeah. Yeah. See, they, there's a thin line. I'm telling y'all, 
There's a thin line. There's sexuality and spirituality. Sexuality. Kanye trying to have church services. Amen. Amen. One of his albums. Wasn't he on the cover like Jesus or something like that? Amen. Jesus Walk or something like that? Crown of Thorn, all that stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thin line. Thin line. Thin line. Thin line. So, amen. But no, Prince talked about sign of the times. Well, no, Jesus gave us the signs of the times. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. I'm going to show you five parables. I'm going to show you five parables tonight. That's what I want to hit tonight. I'm going to talk about five parables. I'm going to talk about end time events. I want to talk about five parables. Now, this is what Jesus taught during Holy Week. During Holy Week. Yeah, this was on. This is called the Olivet Discourse. This is called the Olivet Discourse. And the Olivet Discourse. Amen. Yeah, he appears to still be alive. I think. Amen. And, and just Google it or, or just type his name. and It'll tell you whether he's living or dead, because I know I saw something. They found him and he was homeless. I read that last year. Amen. But also the, the drugs then fried his brain. His brain is fried. His brain is fried. Yeah. And that's what them drugs and alcohol are do to you. Drugs and alcohol are do to you. Yep. 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 Amen. All right. But during Holy Week. So, yeah, during Holy Week, Jesus taught the Olivet Discourse. That was on Tuesday of Holy Week. He gave us five parables, five parables. Y'all write this down very quickly. He gave us five parables. The five parables are found. The five parables are found in Matthew 24 and 25. Five parables very quickly. I'm going to mention these tonight. Five parables. The parable of the house owner, the owner of the house, the owner of the house. That's Matthew 24. Uh huh. Matthew 24. 42, Matthew 24, 42, the owner of the house, Matthew 24, 42. Therefore, keep watch because you not, do not know the day or what day the Lord will come. I want to talk to you about the return of Christ. I want to talk to you about perilous times. I want to talk to you about the signs that we just had an earthquake in New York, right? Before that, there was an earthquake in, in, Thai, in, in, in uh, Taiwan. In Taiwan. Uh, yeah. I want to talk to you about these signs of the times. I want to talk to you about the return of Christ. Th these are things that Jesus talked about during Holy Week, during Holy Week. Matthew 24, starting at 42. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day the Lord will return. But understand this. If the owner of the house, this is called the parable of the house owner, the parable of the house owner. This is one parable. Uh, parable number two. Come down to verse 45, verse 45. Who then is the faithful servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in this house? Believe it or not, that's a separate parable. That's a different parable, different parable. That's parable number two, parable number two at verse 45. Who then is the faithful and wise servant? That's called the parable of the servant, the wise servant. Parable number one, the house owner. Parable number two, the wise servant. Let me give you parable number three. Parable number three. Parable number three. Five parables. Boom, boom, boom. Bullet, bullet, bullet. Five parables Jesus gave us. Jesus gave us during Holy Week. The parable of the ten virgins. Ten virgins. Uh, Twenty-five. At that time, uh, King James is interesting. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. He has a train of thought, and he's following that train of thought. Five parables, they're all related. They're all related. Parable number three, Matthew chapter 25, verse one, King James, then shall, and the word then connects to the previous chapter, previous chapter, previous chapter. Then shall the kingdom of heaven, that's also my favorite subject, one of my favorite subjects. One of my favorite subjects is return to Christ. Another favorite subject I have is the kingdom. I love teaching about the kingdom. So here I'm going to talk to you about the kingdom. I'm going to talk to you about the kingdom. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom, to meet Jesus. Are you ready for when Jesus returns? Are you ready? You can't get ready when Jesus turn, returns. You have to be ready. Woo, that's a good lesson. Where is it now? Is it Wednesday night? You can't be getting ready. You ain't even going to have time to fumble. You're not going to have time to blink your eye when Jesus returns. Did you all hear what I said? You're not going to have time to blink your eye when Jesus returns. 
Y'all forgive me. It's hay fever season. It's hay fever season, but that's all right. Hey, Amen. Y'all, y'all forget. You're not going to have time to blink your eye. The Bible says in a moment in the, say it again. I heard you say it. In the moment in the, now that's not blinking your eye. Let me help you with that. That's not blinking your eye. That's the, the, the time that it takes for light, for light. Amen. Scientists, matter of fact, scientists don't even have a measure for it. I've looked up different uh, definitions, different definitions for that. Scientists don't even have a, there's not a consistent agreed upon measure of time for the twinkling of an eye. That's how fast it is. That's how fast it is. You're not going to have time to get ready. That's why the Bible says be ready. Woo, this is good right here. Anybody fast and pray with me tonight? Anybody fast? If you fast and praying with me, see, that means you're trying to get ready. That means you, 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 you're ready. That means, that means that, see, you can't be getting ready. You got to be ready when Jesus returns. Yeah, that's the parable of the 10 virgins. That's parable number three is five parables, five parables. Parable number four, the parable of the talents, parable of the talents. Uh, verse 14, that's at Matthew 25, 14. Matthew 25, 1 is a parable of the 10 virgins. That's parable number three. Parable number four, the parable of the talents. Verse 14, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another gave two talents another one this is the parable of the talents that's parable number four parable number four and then the fifth parable the last parable is parable number five verse 31 when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him he will sit on his throne in the heavenly glory all the nations will be gathered this is the sheep and the goats where he separates the sheep and the goats that's the last one all of these speak about the return of christ yeah. All of these talk about the return of Christ. Jesus had a lot to say about his return. He had a lot to say about being ready. So I think it would be uh, advantageous for us to take a look at. It. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Fast and praying. I see you. Yeah. Davina. Yeah. Susie McCardle. Annette Rodriguez. Uh, Edna. There she go. Amen. Donna. God bless you. God bless you. See, this, that's what it means to be ready. It means to be ready. I ain't slipping a slide. No, no, no. I, I want to be ready when he comes. That's the fasting and the praying, the fasting and the praying. Five parables that Jesus gave us, amen, to, to point us to the return, to the return of Christ. Now, each parable has a specific application. Each parable has a specific application. It has a direct application. It has a broad application. It has a direct application. It has a broad application. When Jesus was talking, he was talking to Israel. He was talking directly to Israel. See, we take some things out of the Bible that wasn't meant for us. Jesus was speaking directly to Israel. And he told them, when you see these signs coming, oh yeah, it's, it's about to happen. It's about to happen. And if you're around when these signs happen, See, we have misinterpreted some of the scriptures, but, you know, I'll help you with it. I'll help you because, you know, uh, there's a verse in there, verse 35. It says, when this generation, the generation that sees these things will not pass away before the return. Well, see, see, and, and we, we misinterpret some of these scriptures. We'll say, well, when Israel becomes a nation, the generation that sees that, you know, da, da, da. Well, no, that's not what that verse is talking about. The verse is talking about it is you have to keep it in context. Jesus was speaking to the disciples. He was speaking to the Jewish people around him. And, but he, he also talked about future events. He also talked about the, 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 the rapture. He talked about, yes, the tribulation period, all these things. But they're in context. They're in context. Amen. So I'm going to help you sort of jump through and, 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 and identify what's what. Identify what's what. All right. Now, in Matthew 24, verses 4 through 26, 4 through 26, Jesus gives us an outline of the tribulation period. He does do that. Revelation chapter 24, everybody go with me, Revelation chapter 24, Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, disciples came to him, tell us, when will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming? The end of the age, there it is, the end of the age. What age is he talking about? The church age, the church age. We're in what's called the church age right now. The church is being gathered. The church is being, saints are being gathered. Gentiles are coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Non-Jews are coming in. Amen. The church age. That's the age that he's talking about. King James says it this way. What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? The sign of your coming. 
Jesus coming, Jesus coming. What you talking about, Pastor? Jesus coming back to the earth. Jesus coming back for his church. Jesus, the end of time, the end of time. Amen. Amen. Prince did a song about that. Uh, uh, 1999. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember what we was doing about 1999 and, 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 and all the stuff we was buying and how y'all was throwing up water at the house? Can't go. Y2K. Come on here. Y2K. All that stuff is real, y'all. Y'all remember Y2K? Good Lord. Folks thought everything was going to come to an end. Folks took money out the bank because they thought the banks were going to be crazy. Yeah, everybody, everybody, amen. Signs of the time, end of the age, 1999. Prince had a song called 1999. Amen, amen. Yep. At, at the church I was at at the time, Triumphant Baptist Church, amen. Pastor Rogers had this guy, I don't know if y'all remember, uh, oh, Lord, what is his name? What is his name? Mm. And he was, he married, he was married to that girl, dark-skinned girl. He was military. He was military. He lived out here in Columbia, too. But and he came and he did a special presentation on how to survive Y2K. What was his wife and his wife? What was her name? Uh, uh, yeah, he was military. He was light skinned, bald headed. His wife, she was dark skinned. She was dark skinned, had a gap in her teeth. Yeah. And they lived out here in Columbia. Mr. Thompson, see if you remember, see if you remember the name. But yeah, he was military and he came and gave a presentation on how to survive Y2K instead of Bible study. We had, and uh, they had, uh, matter of fact, matter of fact, matter <laughs> I can't tell you, I can't, I can't, I ain't gonna tell it all. <laughs> but churches, but let me suffice it to say, churches, churches were twisted all kind of crazy ways. Churches was believing that stuff, that everything was gonna come to an end during Y2K, during Y2K. Ed, there it is, thank you, thank you, Sam. Ed Davis, Ed Davis. Amen. That's right. Amen. Oh, yeah. I remember Ed Davis and his wife. What's his wife's name? What's the wife's name? Darcy Gladys. That's her name. The wife's name is Gladys. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. I'm in the Holy, I'm in the Holy Ghost, y'all. Amen. Ed and Gladys Davis. And he was military. And he came in for a Wednesday night Bible study. I never will forget. The whole Bible study was how to survive Y2K. Amen. The church was all caught up into that. Amen. Church was all caught up into that. Amen. But but no, Jesus gives us the answer as far as when his return. The question, Matthew 24, Matthew 24, uh, what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Let me give it to you very quickly. Let me give it to you very quickly. Amen. Amen. Uh, Jesus gives us a clear outline he gives us a clear outline write this down in your bible write this down in your bible jesus talks about the first half of the tribulation period jesus talks about the first half of the tribulation period when in verses four through eight four through eight the tribulation period is seven years it's seven year period the first half is called the tribulation the second half is called the great tribulation Jesus gives it to us in Matthew 24, Matthew 24, amen, verses four through eight. Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no one deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. Circle that, circle that. You're going to have false Christ, amen, false prophets and false Christ jumping up, amen. You ever heard of uh, Jim Jones down in Guyana? He had him drink uh, Kool-Aid. Well, you know what? He said he was the Christ. He said it was Christ. You're going to have other. You had this Hispanic dude down in Florida. Did the exact same thing. Did the exact same thing. Amen. Well, you're going to have more and more people doing that. More and more people doing that as we draw closer. Uh, verse uh, da, 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 five. You shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Wars and rumors of war. Wars. That's literally uh, a war where they're fighting. That's called hot. That's called hot. If they're shooting at one another, shooting at one another. That's called hot. That's called a hot war. Amen. But if there's just talk or rhetoric, talk or rhetoric. Amen. Well, that's not considered a hot war. Wars and rumors of war. Wars and rumors of war. Uh, verse seven. Nation will rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Amen. You can highlight circle underline that nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Amen. That's literal, but that's also spiritual. That's literal and that's also spiritual. There will be famines. Yes. Parts of Africa. Uh, cover of the newspaper today. Sudan. 
Amen. Uh, Nigeria, uh, many parts of Africa, there's, there's famine going on right now. Famine going on. We're already on the front end of the tribulation period. We're already on the front end. If the, if the rapture came tonight, amen, everything would be in divine order. We're already on the front end. We're seeing these things. We're seeing these things. Uh, verse 7. Uh, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There should be famines, pestilences. COVID was pestilence. COVID was a worldwide pestilence. That's what it was. That's what it was. Yes, yes. Earthquakes just happened. Taiwan. Taiwan. Somebody sent me a picture in Taiwan. The building fell and is leaning right now. It's just leaning in Taiwan. And they build, they build now in anticipation of earthquakes. Wow. They build now in anticipation of earthquakes. People died in, in, in Taiwan. Nobody died here in the United States. Amen. Because God is merciful. God is merciful. He's trying to get folks' attention. Bridge came falling down. God is merciful. If that bridge would have came down during rush hour, in Baltimore. If that bridge would have came down during rush hour, in Baltimore we'd still be going to the funerals. But God is merciful. What's taking God so long, Pastor Strong? What's taking God so long, Pastor Strong? Because somebody watching me right now, amen, amen, you don't have your house in order. Somebody watching me right now, you still slipping and slide. You still playing games. Somebody watching me right now, you got family members that are not saved, and you are the influencer. You are the light, and God needs you to talk to somebody. Let me give you a scripture. Amen. Let me give you a scripture. Amen. Let me give you a scripture. Amen. 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 What's taking God so long? Amen. Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter. Amen. Chapter three. What's taking God so long? Second Peter chapter three, verse 15. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just one verse. Second Peter. I hope this convicts somebody. Amen. Second Peter chapter three, verse 15. Yeah, an account that the long suffering of the Lord. This show taking God a long time. When is God coming? When is God coming? The long suffering of the Lord is salvation. I like the, the NIV Bible. The Lord's patience means salvation. God waiting for somebody to get your life together, get your act together, <clears throat> come out of sin. Amen. Come out of sin. Come out of the darkness into God's light. First half of the tribulation period. Did I give it to you? <clears throat> Verses 4 through 8. Verses 4 through 8. Write this down. Second half of the tribulation period. Amen. The first half of the tribulation period is called, it's just called tribulation. Just call it tribulation. Second half, we call it the great tribulation. I didn't make that up. Matter of fact, that's right in the text. If you go down to verse 21, verse 21. And then shall be great trip. Y'all see that? Say what the Bible says, y'all. Say what the Bible says. You can't go wrong if you say what the Bible says. I, I, I can show it to you. I'm one of the few pastors. I'll take the time to show it to you. Because I want you to say what the Bible says. Matthew 24, King James. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not seen since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor shall ever be. If you're not, put Team Jesus up. Put Team Jesus up. Get on the team now. If you ain't on the team, you there's some openers on the squad now. I got some seats on the bench. You, you need to get on the team. I ain't trying to scare you. I'm trying to prepare you. The second half of the tribulation period, write this down somewhere in your Bible, is verses 9 through 14. It's going to be terrible. I read uh, Revelation chapter 16 where, it's going to, where it says there's going to be a uh, darkness and all that, that's during the second half of the tribulation period. Let me give it to you real quick, 9 through 14, 9 through 14. Then we're going to look at uh, some of these um, parables, some of these parables. Uh, uh, Matthew 24, 9 through 14. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Uh, uh, people that get saved during the tribulation period are going to be martyred. You're going to be forced to take uh, the mark of the beast. You got to take the mark of the beast. You got to bow and kiss his ring or you got to maintain. You got to you got to name the name of Jesus Christ. See, if you name the name of Jesus Christ now, you're not going to have to go through all that persecution. 
If you call on Jesus now, when the rapture comes, you go with Jesus. If you're not saved now, some people will get saved during the tribulation period. Now, now, not everybody, because some people, they're not saved now. They're not serving the Lord now. And some somebody say, well, you know, I'll get it together during the tribulation period. You're not going to get saved. You're not going to get saved. Why? Because you're trifling now. You're trifling now. I say, you're not going to get saved. See, see, because your time for salvation is now. The Bible says the day you hear my voice. Yeah. Yeah. This is good right here. Can I jump on in deep water? Yeah. I say, can I jump on in deep water? See, 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 for, for even entertaining that thought that I'm just going to put it off. I'm going to live buck wild. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live buck wild. I'm going to get it in. And then after the, after the tribulation come, after, after the rapture, I'll come to Christ. I'll come to Christ after the rapture come. No, ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. Nope, nope, nope. Amen. God got something special for you because you, 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 uh, you, you are a special kind of crazy. You are a special kind of trifling. Yeah, you're a special kind of trifling. Amen. See, because see, the Bible says, Isaiah 55, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See? See, see, you, you, you are. Oh, this is good right here. This is good right here. Let me help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody get in. See, 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 you, 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 you fall into a special category when you deliberately keep on sinning. So you fall into a special category. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me let me go into the 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 uh, the nooks and crannies. Let me go into the VIP. There's a VIP room in your heart. There's a VIP room in your mind. And you think God don't know about it. But no, no, no. He, Hebrews chapter 4 says the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It reveals all the hidden secrets. God's word reveals all the hidden secrets. I, I just got an email from the Holy Ghost. See, see, you, you, you deliberately keep on sinning. And you say, oh, I'll get saved later. I'll get saved later. I might even believe some of this stuff y'all talk about in the Bible. Okay, if the rapture come, I'll get I'll get it together later. No, you ain't. You ain't gonna get it. You ain't gonna get it together. Later. See, because your heart ain't right toward God right now. Your heart ain't. You ain't supposed to play, play no games with God. As soon as you hear the gospel, as soon as you get the revelation, as soon as you get the message, as soon as you get the word. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that the day you hear my voice. The day you hear, God is not a game. You ain't supposed to trifle with God, play with God, put God off. Amen. The day you hear his voice. I'm going to show it to you. Amen. A couple of scriptures. Let me give it to you. I'm going to let the book talk. I'm going to let God's word talk. Amen. Uh, 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 come, all you who are thirsty. Yeah. To the waters. Come, 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 come. His invitation, his invitation. Isaiah 55, 1, Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. You know what that says, Dick and John? There's going to be a time when you can't find him. There's going to be a time. There's going to be an opportunity. There's going to be a time. There's going to be a window. There's going to be a time when you can't find God. The door is going to be closed. I'm going to talk about when I talk about the 10 versions. A, 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 amen. Amen. The, the, the five versions were ready. Then five were not ready. And then they went and they got the oil. And then they came knocking on the door. Open up. Let us in. Let us in. And then the master called out. Too late. Too late. That's the parable of the virgins. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. You got to reach out to God when you can find him. You got to reach out to God while God is reaching out to you. You got to answer God when God is calling you. You got to answer. You got when he's knocking on your door. Isn't that a fascinating verse? Isn't that fa Have you ever looked at it that way before? Seek the Lord while he may be found. Why? Because there's going to be a time when you can't find it. When he's not answering. Seek the Lord while he may be. Call on him while he is near. Here it is again. Here's the hook. Verse 7. Let the, let the wicked forsake their way. Amen. You got to turn. You got to repent. Somebody say repent. Come on. You got to turn. You got to let it go, baby. You got to let it go. You got to let that smoking go. You got to let that drinking go. You got to let that pornography go. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. I love God more. 
I said, you got to let it go. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have Jesus and stay a sinner. You can't have Jesus and stay a hell raiser. You can't, you can't, you can't be a Christian and a sinner too. Choose ye this day. Seek the Lord while he may be found. If you see, if you in your heart, you're going to just deliberately keep on sinning. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. No, you're not going to get saved when the rapture comes. Oh, I, well, I'll just get out. I'll, I'll start coming to church. Watch this. Watch this. I don't believe that Bible. I don't believe everything it's saying. Y'all going to have to prove it to me. So so guess what? I'll believe when the rapture comes. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. The problem with that is, guess what? You ain't going to have a mind. You You will not have the clarity of thought. You will not have the capacity to get. To, you won't be in your right mind to get saved. You won't be in your right mind to get saved. Let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. Uh, I give you scripture. I ain't just I ain't just talking. I can show it to you. I can show it to you. Amen. See, people that love sin more than God. If you love sin more than you love God, well, God got something for you. If you love sin. More than, and see, that's the, what the Bible said in the last days, we're going to have a big problem because, see, that's the problem. You got people, they love sin more than God. They love sin. In the United States now, you got more people love, amen, that, that, are, that are out of church, that are in church. And this was before the pandemic. The falling away began before the pandemic. God just, you know, God just, he's just pushing us along. So he put everything on lockdown. This started before the pandemic. I got the statistics. I got the statistic. Let me show it to you. Uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, know this. In the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times. One of the main attributes, verse 4, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, perilous times in the last days. One of the indicators, verse 4, Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than. You know, they broke a record with the women's uh, basketball. Caitlin Clark, coach, uh, what's the sister? Give me her name. Staley, Dawn. Woo, she had church. She had church. Forgive me, y'all, forgive me. I digress. She had church. And they came put the mic in her face. Tell me about the win and what you were behind and so on and so forth. She said, uh, yeah, hold on to that. But, but before I do that, I got to talk about my God and he been good to me <laughs> and he gave me favor. And oh, my. I love her testimony. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's amazing. And, and she church for real because she talked about she didn't just say, I thank God. She said, I thank I, I, I thank him for the favor of God. That's church talk. That's church. I mean, she was she's like, God been good to me. She gave an amazing testimony. Yeah, father. She gave an amazing testimony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, they broke all kind of records. They broke all kind of records, viewership, the sports, all these activities and, and foot. And like I said, I, I'm a sports fan. I love football. I love football. I love basketball, all that stuff. Guess what? It, it, it don't get in the way of church though. Come on, sir. I don't go to football. I don't watch foot. I don't watch basketball. I don't put none of that in front of worship. I don't put none of that in front of worship. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And see, in the, these last days, people love pleasure more than, more than God. Amen. Some people deliberately keep on sinning. Let me read that verse. Let me read that verse. Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, 26. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of what? Judgment. And raging fire that will consume the what enemies of God. Amen. That's why I see uh, Hebrews chapter four says, "The day you hear His voice, harden not your heart." Let me show you what's going to happen during the tribulation period. Some people think, "Oh, well, I'll just get saved during the tribulation period. I'll just get saved after all y'all gone. I'll just get saved. Then I'll believe it. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it." Well, it might be too late, because uh, uh, Second Thessalonians says this. Yes, yes. Second Thessalonians says this. Mm, start at verse 
9, verse 9, the coming of the lawless one, the coming of the lawless one. Uh, King James says, and the, uh, where am I? I'm at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm sorry, chapter 2, verse 9. Yeah, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan, after the working of Satan. Yeah, with all power and signs, and watch this, lying wonders, lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. It sounds a little mechanical in the King James. Let's come over to the NIV. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan. The lawless one is the Antichrist. The man of perdition, the lawless one, lawless one, the Antichrist. Uh, da, da, da. With the work of Satan displayed in all kind of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders. And in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing, deceives those who are perishing. Let me say that again. Deceives those who are perishing. In other words, you've rejected God, turned away from God, God knocking at the door, God calling you, God reaching out. But guess what? You don't respond. You don't respond. Who did? So watch this. Watch this. Since you reject God, since you've rejected God, deceives those who are perishing. Watch this. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. God reaching out to you. God sending the preacher. Amen. People reaching out to you. Amen. And before y'all leave, man, and make, um, and make sure you do this. Like and share. Like and share. See, that's you reaching out to sinners. That's you reaching out to family members. That's reaching out to unsaved people. Amen. And before, so make sure you like and you share. We connect. We connect. Amen. This is not for popularity. I'm not trying to make my name great. Amen. This is ministry. This is ministry. This is where the people are. How to reach the masses. God has put us where the people are. Amen. If it was up to me, amen, we'd still be in church. But guess what? I ain't running nothing. I'm not the boss. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Come on here. I say Jesus is Lord. Amen. This is the Lord's doing. Amen. The internet, that's where the people are. So guess what? God took his men and his women, and that's where we are now. Amen. So, so, so please like and share. Let's connect with each other. Amen. Amen. This is another way how God is trying to reach people and people are, are, are becoming saved. People are, are hearing the gospel message. They're, they're getting saved. This is so again, God is, is he's, he's knocking. He, he's trying to reach those. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. When a person rejects an invitation, you, you're trying to talk to them. You talk to them about Christ or uh, the, the, the God sends. He raises up a man. He raises up a woman. He sends that message through the Holy Spirit. He tries to convict someone. He tries to draw. Remember, no one comes to God unless Christ draws them. Christ draw, God draws. God has a way of drawing through the Holy Spirit, through people, through events. Amen. God has a number of ways that he seeks to draw people. Uh, but again, in Revelation, again, Revelation, behold, I stand at the door and what? Knock. He ain't going to force himself on nobody. He's not going to force himself on anybody. So if, if, if someone just keeps rejecting, 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 oh, I'm going to put it off. I'm going to put it off. I'll get saved later. I'll get saved later. I will get saved after the rapture comes. I'm going to get saved after the rapture comes. Uh-uh. It, it's, it, it's, it's likely not to happen. Why? Second Thessalonians, chapter two, verse eleven. For this reason, for what reason? They refuse. They, I'm gonna put it off. I'm gonna put it off. Ain't no big deal. Ain't no. I'm gonna put it off. All right. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion, so that they will believe the lie. And so, I'm going to read it slow. And so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. Oh, I love God, but I love sin more. Oh, I love God. I go to church, but I love this world now. I love, I love turning up now. I love turning up. I, I, got, I got to turn up now. Okay. I love pastor. Amen. Pastor. I hear what you're saying, but, but I got to turn up now, pastor. I got to turn up. I got to turn up. I me and my girlfriends, we go on and we get, we got to turn up. Pastor. I know what that Bible say, but we got to turn. Well, you go, you keep on turning up. then. You keep on. I ain't the judge. 
I to judge. I'm just one of the messengers. Look what it say one more time, one more time. And so all that verse, well, I got to read verse 11 and 12. Thank you, Lord. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. Satan's a liar. Signs, wonders, counterfeit miracles, all that stuff. Yeah. So that they will believe the lie. And so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wicked. You know, some people, the Bible says their feet are swift to do evil. No hesitation, no hesitation towards sin, no hesitation toward a, a life of, 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 of riotous living. You always slipping and sliding in and out of sin. You always slipping and sliding in and out of sin. Amen. By this time, honey, you ought to be good and saved. By this time, you ought to be not saved, but saved and sanctified. By this time. Amen. Amen. As long as you've been, been doing this and in church, you should be saved and sanctified. You should, you should have let go of sin by now. You should have let go of those old habits. You should not be quick to run into mischief and sin and riots as living. You should be further along by now. You should be further along by now. Come on, say amen, somebody. Or oh, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. I'm in, I'm in the lesson. I told you I'm teaching from five parables. And all these five parables speak to, thank you, Holy Spirit. It speaks to being ready and watching. Watching and being ready. Watching. I told you there are five parables. I hope you have it. I gave you the list earlier. It may, it may go back in the broadcast. That's the beautiful thing about what we're doing now. You can go back and look at it over again. Right? You can go back and look at it over again. Amen. I told you, I gave you five parables in Matthew 24 and 25. Boom, 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 boom. It's very significant because Jesus, he, he, he's, this is the Olivet Discourse. And he teaches us about watchfulness, being ready. Starts there in uh, verse 42. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or you know, verse 42. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Why, Pastor Strong? This is where my name comes from. My, my name, Gregory, comes from the word watch. Therefore, keep watch. Therefore, be ye also ready. Uh, verse 42, verse 42, verse 42. Watch ye therefore. My name literally in Greek, Gregorio, watch. That's where my name comes from in the Bible. That's where my name. I had to be saved. Yo. I had to be saved. I ain't had no choice. I ain't had no choice. My mom set me up. My mother set me up. I thank God for him. Amen. That's where my name literally. I had to study Greek and Hebrew in the Bible. Gregorio, that word watch is Gregorio. Keep watch. Keep watch. Because you do not know on what day the Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you must also be ready. Look at what it says. Verse 44. You must also be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Ready. Be ready. Not getting ready. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. This is what I want. That's parable number one. Parable number one is, I gave you the list, the homeowner, the house owner. Parable number one. Parable number two starts at verse 45, the parable of the servant. Parable of the servant. Let me dig a little bit deeper into this parable. Uh, who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in the household uh, to give them their food at the proper time? Oh, I love that one. Verse 45 in the King James. Uh, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them their meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him doing so. Now, this is believers right here. This is the Christians. This is Christian because you're a child of God. Amen. 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 You got the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. More than that. You have spiritual gifts. Oh, yeah. You're not just saved, but you're a servant of the Lord. I like this one right here. I like this one right here. Yes. It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth. He will put him in charge of all his possessions. If you say, amen, you got the Holy Spirit. Ooh, that's good right there, y'all. That's good right there. That's good right there. I say, if you say you got the Holy Spirit. If you got the Holy Spirit, that means you got the fruit of the Spirit. Hey. <laughs> if you got the Holy Spirit, that means you got the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. Amen. But if you got the, the Holy Spirit, you also have the gifts of the Spirit. Yes, gifts of the Spirit. Oh, man. Hey, yeah. Teachers. Hey, 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 amen. Servants. 
A amen. Amen. The gift of hospitality. A amen. You got different gifts. You got different gifts. A amen. Edification, exhortation, and comfort. Oh, yeah, you have different gifts. Amen. You can minister. You can serve. You can teach other people. Come on here. Amen. Amen. You got gifts. Amen. You're, you have the fruit of the spirit. You have the gifts of the spirit. Amen. You're a servant of the Lord. Oh, my goodness gracious. Amen. You, you're not just a bump on a log. Amen. You are somebody in God. Amen. Amen. You didn't, just didn't fall off the back of the truck. Amen. You've been doing this for a while. You've been walking with the Lord. You've been serving the Lord. Well, guess what? Amen. Amen. To whom much is given. Much is required. I ain't trying to break in the back door when I get to heaven. Amen. No, I want to hear him say, well done. I'm working on something. I'm not. I'm not. No, I don't have a pitiful spirit. I don't have a poverty spirit. No, I, I'm, I'm working on something. I'm coming up against lazy. I'm coming up against trifling. No, we ain't just trying to make it into heaven. No, we want them to roll out the red carpet. Amen. Amen. Blow the trumpets in Zion. Have the angels standing there watching. Amen. When you come into heaven, everybody ought to stop and say, hey, he made it. Look, she's here. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm in the lesson because Matthew 25, I'm not there yet. Matthew 25 talks about Matthew 25 talks about the, the, the judgment of the Jews at the end of the tribulation period. It talks about the judgment of the Jews, seven years of tribulation. And then you're going to have the judgment. But it, it, it's also lessons for the church. Lessons for the church. Lessons. for. Let me do this. Let me give you my outline. Let me get my outline. Let me do that. Hey, Amen. I'm getting excited. Y'all hey, forgive me. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Let me finish my outline. Did I finish? Amen. Revelation. Amen. The, the second half of the tribulation period. Let me let me calm down because I get excited. I get excited. And, and I ain't gonna have my staff fussing at me. You didn't give the outline, Pastor Strong. They be fussing at me. Tell me I didn't get it. So let me finish my outline. Amen. First half of the tribulation period. Second half of the tribulation period is nine through 14. Nine through 14. Yeah, that's what I that's where I was. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They shall deliver you to be afflicted. They shall kill you. You will be hated of all nations for my sake. That's the tribulation period. Persecution is going to break out. We ain't being persecuted right now. That's going to break out during the tribulation period. Then shall many be offended, shall betray one another, shall hate one another. They're going to be spying on you. If you're a Christian during the tribulation period, people are going to lie on you or they're going to spy on you or they're going to turn you into the Antichrist. You'll get turned in. Yeah. Verse 11. Many false prophets will rise and shall deceive many because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold, wax cold. Yeah. But he that endureth until the end shall be saved. That's during the tribulation period. If you can make it during that that tribulation. Amen. They're going to force Christians to take the mark of the beast. Take, take the mark of the, well, either either take the mark of the beast, amen, it, well, you're going to have two choices. Either take the mark of the beast or you're going to be, uh, you're going to be uh, a martyr. You're going to be executed. Bow. Bow or die. During the tribulation period. Bow or die. Yeah, during the tribulation period. And if you don't, if you take the mark of the beast, well, then, you know, uh, well, see, you're on the wrong side. You're in trouble. With God, you, you'll be accepted by man. Yeah, but you'll be in trouble with God. And so you'll be persecuted. So that's why it's advantageous for you to be a Christian now. And, and, and see, we're not going through persecution now compared to what it's going to be during the tribulation period. Amen. It ain't bad now. It ain't tough now. It ain't tough now. But, but during the tribulation period, the church is going to be persecuted. And if you take that mark of the beast, you're in trouble. Yeah, you're going to be in trouble with God. You're going to be in trouble with God. See, yeah, uh, that mark of the beast. Yeah, let me show you a couple of scriptures. Uh, look at Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Yeah, let me show you. See, you're going to have to take the mark of the beast or if you don't take if you if you don't bow to the Antichrist, then you're going to be martyred. You're going to be martyred. Uh, look at let me give it to you. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14 talks about the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast. 
Don't get tattoos, y'all. Don't don't get tattooed. Don't get tattoo marks. Don't get tattoo marks. People that are getting tatted up now, see, that's a precursor to the tribulation period. Don't be doing that stuff now. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't. I'm sorry. Amen. I don't mean no harm. I got family members. I don't mean, I ain't, I'm not calling out no names. I could call names, but I'm not going to do that. Don't get tattooed. Why? Because that's what they're going to be doing during the tribulation period. The tattoo mark, mark of the beast. You ain't supposed to get marks on your body. Put my phone number. Put my phone number. Call me directly. Talk about me, but talk to me also. Talk about me, but talk to me. Call me. You ain't supposed to get tattooed. You're supposed to get tattooed. Yeah, only Mark. You said Bible say press toward the mark. Press toward the mark. Don't get marks on your body. On. During the tribulation period, uh, 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 Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, Revelation chapter 14, verse 11, Revelation chapter 16, verse 2, Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, Revelation chapter 20. Don't take my word for it. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, Revelation chapter 14, verse 11, Revelation chapter 16, verse 2, Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. I can show it to you. I can show it to you. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Don't get marks. Don't get marks. And the third angel followed, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receives his mark, and receives his mark on his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Don't get the mark. Don't get the mark of the beast. Amen. Well, I ain't getting the mark of the beast. You ain't supposed to be getting no marks. You ain't supposed to be getting no marks. Why are you getting marks anyway? Why? Why? Amen. Amen. They're going to force you to get that mark or if you refuse to get the mark, well, then you're going to be a martyr. You're going to be martyred. You're going to be martyred. That's what it says in Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word and the testimony they maintain. They maintain. In other words, they're going to say, look, either get the mark of the beast or he said, well, no, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Are you sure? You're a Christian? Well, if, you be a, if you're a Christian, that means you're going to be martyred. We're going to look, you, 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 you're going to have to, and just like during Bible days, Amen. Amen. Now, either you take the mark or we're going to kill you. Either you take the mark or we're going to kill you. So that's why you want to be a Christian now. You want to be caught up in the rapture. You don't want to go through the tribulation period. You don't want to go through the tribulation period. No, Christian, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. If you believe the Bible, you don't have to believe Pastor Strong. That's why I take my time and walk through this. You don't have to believe Pastor Strong, but at least believe the scriptures. You don't want to go through the tribulation period. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that. That's a terrible time. Matthew, let me finish this. Let me get this outline. I'm going to get this outline. Amen. I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Amen. Uh, Matthew 24, 9 through 14 is the tribulation period. Yes. He who stands to the end will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end shall come then then and that's talking about the tribulation period amen the gospel is going to be preached bible says angels bible says there's going to be 144,000 preaching 144,000 not jehovah's witnesses that's why i mentioned prince i wasn't just uh, 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 flying off the seat of my pants the reason i mentioned prince and the reason i mentioned uh, uh, uh sly stone and and all of them folks they they're jehovah's witnesses and see they believe that the 144,000 are Jehovah's Witnesses that are going to be saved. No, the 144,000 are Jews that are going to be preaching during the tribulation period. It's 144,000 Jews, amen, because he's going to have a witness. Why? Pastor Strong ain't going to be here. Amen. amen. Pastor Strong ain't going to be, City Zion ain't going to be here. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. Who going back with Jesus? Who going back with Jesus? Amen. Who going to be called up to meet him in the air? Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Put that in my chat. I'm going with Jesus. Put that in my chat. I'm going with Jesus. Just put a rapture. If you believe the Bible, put a rapture in my rapture, rapture. Put that in my, in my text, rapture. If you believe the Bible, if you believe the Bible, 
Just put that. I wish we made that go. I wish we could break the internet. Put put a rapture in the Bible. In my text, I'm sorry. In, put a rapture. Yeah, yeah. Rapture. Put put a rapture in the Bible. By the way, where is that? In where is that? Let me show it to you. If you believe the Bible, if you believe what Jesus said, if you believe what Jesus, just put that. Put that. Yeah. Susie said, "Oh, she put the whole thing." Go ahead, girl. I'm going with Jesus. I ain't mad at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sound like that dude that the gathering that got got healed. He jumped in the boat. Jesus, like, wait, wait, what? You in the boat? <laughs> yeah, put that rapture. That's it. Yeah, Carolyn, come on here. Where? Devin, Kia, I see you. Nicholas Fonda, Arlene, Annette. Uh, come on, put right. If you believe the Bible, I didn't say believe Pastor Strong. Amen. Deetra, come on, Susie. Lynette, good to see you, Lynette. Amen. Vicky Bell, Vicky Bell, Richard Barnes, Edna Riddick. Come on here. Glenn West. Yeah, Deacon is Naisha. I see you. Yeah, Deacon John, right there, right there, right there, right there. Amen. 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 Jesus, what he predicted about Jerusalem, it happened. Olivet Discourse. They were at the Mount of Olives. The, the disciples were amazed. Look at those buildings. Look at those buildings. Jesus said, All of them, all those stones wiped out. It happened in 70 AD. Prophecy, the sure word of prophecy. Well, if that happened, if what he said about that happened, guess what? I believe him for all the rest. And he said the rapture is coming. Where is the rapture, Pastor Strong? It's all throughout the Bible. Let me give you a specific verse. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant. Yeah. Concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus. If you are a Christian and, 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 and heaven forbid, you, you die on this side, you die on this side, it's not death, cessation of life or existence. You are just resting in Christ. You are resting in the Lord. Sleep in Christ. That's what the Bible says. Sleep in Jesus, yes. Yes. So them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, circle that, coming of the Lord, shall not prevent. Let me come up to the NIV, 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 NIV. 15. According to the Lord's own word. I got First Thessalonians chapter 4. This one of them highlighted parts in your Bible. Mother Sally, good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. Steve Grady, I see you. Louise Falk, I see you. God bless you. Yeah. Arlene, sign me up. Come on here for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name on the roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been changed. That's it. I got you, honey. Uh, uh, First Thessalonians chapter 4. Yeah. Verse 15. According to the Lord's own word. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, we tell you that we will, who are still alive and who are left till the coming of the Lord. Two phases. It comes, he comes first with a rapture and then he comes back to the earth. There are two phases, two phases. Phase one, he comes and he snatches away the church. Seven years of hell breaks out on the earth. At the end of the seven years, he returns. His feet comes back, boom, to the Mount of Olives. So that's the coming, the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who fall asleep, who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet. Amen. In our King James says Trump. Some people say Donald Trump. Huh? Don't do that. Don't you do that. Don't do that. Uh-uh. White evangelicals, don't you do that. No, the trumpet call of God. The dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are alive, who are still alive and left, will be caught up together. Circle that word caught up together in the King James Bible. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Those three words, caught up together. The Latin phrase, caught up together. Rapture, that's where rapture, same thing, same thing. And many Bible teachers, I'm one of them, I'm one of them, believe that we are the generation that may see the return of Christ. Right. 
that may experience the rapture. I am one of them. Yes, I teach that, that we might be the generation. I might be wrong. Amen. And I'm not predicting dates, but I, I strongly believe, amen, that, that we are that generation that's going to see the return of Christ. Amen. Let me finish. I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out. Amen. So Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Give me, give me five more minutes. Give me five minutes. Y'all give me five. Somebody put that in my chat. Give me five. <sighs> Amen. Somebody give me five. Give me five. Put that in my chat. Give me five. Forgive me for sneezing. It's, it's hay fever season, but you know. Amen. Y'all forgive me for sneezing. Amen. God bless you. There you go. Lynette, she's the first one. Thank you, Lynette. Thank you, Lynette. There they come. There they come. Give me five more. Give me five more. Amen. Watch this. So the outline, first half of the tribulation period, write this down somewhere. Jesus teaches about the return of Christ. He teaches about the rapture. He teaches about the tribulation. He teaches about his second coming. Bible students, Matthew 24 and 25, marvelous text. Marvelous text. This is for church people. This ain't for sinners now. This is for church folk. You need the Holy Ghost to understand what I'm what I'm what I'm digging into here. So Matthew, yeah, twenty mm -hmm, four. Yep, he gives us the outline of the seven year tribulation period. I just gave you that first half of the tribulation, Matthew twenty four four through eight. Second half of the tribulation, nine through fourteen. Nine through fourteen. Amen. The big event during that tribulation period, Satan is going to set up a temple. There's going to be a temple over in the Holy Land. You know why they're fighting right now, y'all? Because they want Jerusalem. Hamas, they want Jerusalem. The Arabs want Jerusalem. You know why? Because they're going to build a temple there. Where the Dome of the Rock is and all that, they're going to build a temple because Satan is going to be worshipped. That's in verse 15. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel. Let the reader understand, then let those who live in Judea. You ever heard the term run for the hills? You ever hear the term run for the hills? Can I show this to y'all? Can I? We say stuff and we don't understand where it came from. That saying comes from the Bible. Look at what it says. It says, flee to the mountains. Flee to the mountains. You ever heard the term run for the hills? In other words, when Satan sets up his antichrist in the church and they start worshiping you need to run for the hills because you got three and a half years that jesus is coming back amen you are in the middle you are in the tribulation period when you see that happening and all this that's going on in the middle east right now this is the powder keg it's the fuse the fuse is about to be lit amen so those of you that believe the Bible, that's why I talk about these end time events the way that I do. Sinners don't understand what I'm talking about. Sinners don't understand what we're talking about. But if you saved and got the Holy Ghost, yeah, I feel real good in my sanctified spirit. Yeah, yeah, we're getting close to that time. All right, real quick, real quick, let me give you the rest. I'm going to give you the outline. I ain't going to get there tonight. I ain't going to get there tonight. Amen. Amen. Jesus teaches a parable. Parable of the ten virgins, chapter 25. Yeah, them 10 virgins. Yeah, that's talking about Jews. The literal interpretation of that, when Jesus comes back after the end of the tribulation period, the, the Jews that, that make it through the tribulation, he's going to judge them. And that's how he's going to judge them. The Jew, not the church, the Jews. It's the literal judgment for the tribulation Jews. Just write that down somewhere. It's good for you. Now, everybody, we study this. The church, we study this, but this is talking specifically to the Jew. Uh, the, the parable of the talents, he's still talking about Israel. That's how he's going to be judging Israel when they come out of the tribulation period. The church, we learn lessons from it, but he ain't talking about the church. He's talking about Israel. He's talking about Israel. And, and when he's talking about the, the ten virgins, he's talking about Israel. When he's talking about the talent, he's talking about Israel. When he talks about the sheep and the goat, he's talking about Israel. He ain't talking about the church. The church is already with him up in heaven. Amen. Church is already with him up in heaven. It says there in verse 5, 25, 5, the bridegroom was a long time coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. That's the Jewish nation. Jewish nation fell asleep. Jesus, Jesus, amen, Jesus went back to be with the Father, and guess what? The church was born, and Gentiles came. Gentiles coming to the Lord. Gentiles coming to the Lord. 
the Jew, the Jew, they not, they, they're inactive right now. Amen. They, they're, they're not a part of the church. Most Jews are not a part of the church. Why? Because they're still waiting for their Messiah to come. Guess what? They're going to meet him during the tribulation period. The Jew is asleep right now. The Jew, they, they, they sleep right now. They sleep. Look what it said. Verse 5. The bridegroom was a long... Ooh, this is good, y'all. Okay, y'all going to let me take you into the deep water? Y'all going to let me take you into the deep water? Verse 5. The bridegroom was a long time coming. Jesus has been gone for a long time. Yes, he was. Amen. 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 He rose from the dead, walked amongst men for 40 days. The Bible says he went to the Mount of Olives. He was talking to him. And then the Bible says, amen, he was just caught up. Two angels he came and said, why stand ye here gazing? The same Jesus who was caught up, he's coming back the same way and to the same spot. He's been gone now for, for, for over 2,000 years. 2,000 years. Verse 5, the bridegroom, groom, that's Jesus, was a long time in coming, and they all, he's talking to the Jews. He's talking to the disciples. He's in the upper, the Olivet Discourse. He's teaching the disciples. He's teaching all those Jews that are following him. And they all became drowsy and fell asleep. The Jewish nation, the Jewish nation, boom, all during this church age, uh-uh, they're not following Jesus. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't serve Jesus. They don't call on Jesus. No, no, no. But the church, Gentiles, we came to Jesus. Amen. So we are part of, we're grafted in. We're grafted in. We're part of the kingdom now. We're part of the kingdom. We're that chosen generation, the royal priesthood, the holy nation. We are not the, ooh, this is good, y'all. Y'all forgive me, I'm excited. Not the Jewish nation, the holy nation. Not the Jewish nation, the holy nation. That's us. That's the non, that's the Gentile. Amen. Let me say one more thing. Let me say one more thing. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. Don't go back to what God delivered you from. If God delivered you from drugs and alcohol, don't go back. If God delivered you from fornication, don't go back. If, if you were shacking up with somebody, don't go back. Amen. If, you, if, 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 if pornography was your thing, don't go back. If stealing, you was a thief, you was a criminal, you were a thief. Amen. You are a thief, credit card thief, credit card thief. Amen. Hustling and scamming. Amen. If God brought you out of that, don't go back. Don't go back. Because if you go back and the rapture comes and you, you, you back in the club when the rapture comes, you at the strip club when the rapture comes. You land next to somebody that not your wife or husband. Come on, sir. And the rapture comes. You're going to get left behind. You're going to get left behind. I'm out. I'm getting out. I'm getting out. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, uh, can I get the second parable? I want to look at the second one. I want to look at the second one. So then, uh, who then is the faithful and wise servant? Who the master put in charge of the servants in his household? Yeah, it's, it's, it will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so. Doing what? Doing, doing, doing what? Doing what? Mm -hmm. uh, serving. Serving. If you're a servant, if you're a servant, whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their proper food at proper. You're serving the Lord, whatever that is, whatever calling, whatever ministry you have. Stay with me now. I'm going to show you something real tricky. here. I'm going to show you something real tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you the truth. Yeah. He will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked. Suppose the servant is wicked. You mean a preacher can be wicked? You mean a musician can be wicked? An usher can, an usher can get high and do drugs? You mean a servant of the Lord can be wicked? Look at it. Y'all got Matthew 24? Amen. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. Highlight circle, underline that. You go back to that life-controlling habit. You go back to that lifestyle. You go back to that mood-altering drug. You relapse. You relapse. You, but you don't get back up. You, 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 you keep wallowing in the habit. You keep wallowing in the sin. 
Y'all got Matthew 24? I'm not making this up. Verse 49. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants, mistreat, eats and drinks with drunkards, picks up, he relapses. Watch this. The master of that servant will come at a day when he does not expect. And in an hour, he's not aware. He comes back during a happy hour. He comes back during a happy hour. You sitting there making love to a tonic and gin. Happy hour. Y'all know what happy hour is, don't you? The master will come on a day when he does not expect him. In an hour, he is not aware. He will, watch this, the master, he will, fare you well, I'm getting out, I'm getting out. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. Because somebody say, well, hold up, pastor, wait, he is serving the Lord. He can't lose his salvation. He can't lose his salvation. You're absolutely right if he's really saved, if he's truly saved, if he's saved for real, if his faith is genuine. Absolutely. But everybody who claims to be saved is not saved. Everybody who preaches is not saved. Everybody who's singing the choir is not saved. Everybody who dance ministry is not saved. Everybody who counts the money is not saved. Everybody who is in church is not saved. Some are hypocrites. Matthew 25, Matthew 25, Matthew 25, verse, let me give you another verse, verse 26. The master replies, you wicked, lazy servant, wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest uh, where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit. Uh, so when I return, I would have received it with it. Come down to verse 30, verse 30, Matthew 25, 30. Throw the worthless servant outside. King James says unprofitable servant unprofitable servant, worthless servant, worthless servant into the darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. In other words, this is not a genuine, there, this is not, there was no genuine confession, no genuine conversion. I ain't going there. I, ain't, I don't have time. Remember the wheat and the tear. They look just alike. They look identical. They look identical. The disciples said, well, Lord, let us. We'll do the separating. Jesus said, no, 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 because you'll get them confused. Amen. Sometimes the, 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 sometimes the saint looks like a sinner, but sometimes the sinner looks like a saint. He said, the angel, he said, I'll do the separating. I'll do the separating. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let it go, y'all. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. I ain't finished. Amen. We'll, we'll pick it up next week. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hold on to your notes. Amen. We're going into the deep water. Going into the deep water. Amen. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Amen. Amen. City of Zion. City of Zion. Tell them. Amen. We're going into the deep water. Amen. Amen. Not getting ready. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. Amen. Don't leave. like, share, Amen. Amen. You know someone, amen, that, that needs this lesson. Amen. And you can cut and paste and all that kind of good stuff. Like, share. YouTube, I need you to subscribe. Come on, help me make God's name larger. Help me make God's name larger in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. If you need salvation, not sure about your salvation, if, 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 if some of these scriptures pulled on your heartstring, remember uh, the Isaiah text. Amen. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If you're not on team Jesus, you need to get on team Jesus. Four words. Lord Jesus, save me. That's it. Not joining first Baptist, not joining second Baptist. Uh, uh. Lord Jesus, save me. Amen. Pray that prayer and mean it. Pray that prayer and mean it. And then the Bible says thou shalt be saved. Amen. The Bible says, amen. God will. Amen. Jesus will. Yeah, absolutely. And the Holy Spirit, you will be sealed. He will, he will, he will indwell you. He will seal you with his Holy Spirit and change you. And the rest is history. Amen. Just call me on the phone. We'll talk about it. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Ned Rodriguez. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Keisha Willett. God bless you. Good to see you. I hope you ain't just getting here. Amen. Was she in here already? God bless you, Keisha. Good to see you down in uh, 
Kentucky? Keisha, tell me where you're at again. Tell me where you're at. I think you're in Kentucky. Good to see you, my sister. God bless you. Love you. In Jesus' name. God bless all of you. Amen. God bless you tonight. JC Norman, God bless you, man. God bless you. Yes, Lord. God bless you, brother. Good to see you, man. Also, all my brothers in Central Union. Well, let me do this. Y'all stay tuned for uh, announcements. Y'all stay tuned for the announcements. Amen. Uh, let's do this. Let's lift our offering. God bless you. Thank you for your giving and your faithfulness. Amen. If the word of God, if these lessons are helping you, help me. Help me stay on the air. Help me stay on the air. Help me stay on the air. If these lessons are helping you, come on. I need your tithes and your offering. Tithes and offering. Whatever God tell you to do. I ain't going to tell you what to do. But listen to the Holy Ghost. If, if we're feeding you, the Bible says the tithe go to the place where you're being fed. Tithes and offering go to where you're being fed. Five dollars, whatever. Ain't nothing too small. Ain't nothing too big. But come on. I need your help. Come on, y'all hit that QR code with your phone and make it do what it do. God bless you. I need your help. We're meeting for communion. Um, first Sunday in May. First Sunday, the 5th of May. The 5th of May. Deadline for registration is going to be the 4th Sunday of this month. I need you to register if you live in this area. Amen. I'm saying a lot, but we got a lot going on. Listen, listen, listen. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Amen. We're meeting for communion. First Sunday in May, amen, 2 o'clock to, to 4, amen. We're going to eat, we're going to fellowship, we're going to hug some next, amen, amen. Forsake not assembling, amen. The Lord is pushing us, amen. We're, we're coming back together, we're coming back together. Pastor Strong, is City Zion ever going to meet every, on every Sunday again? I don't know, the Lord might say so, I don't know. I'm doing what the Lord is telling me to do right now. I'm doing what the Lord is telling me to do right now. First Sundays, amen. On the first Sunday, we're going to get together, so come on. Don't worry about every Sunday, <laughs> come on the first Sunday. How about that? Don't worry about every Sunday. Try that. Come on this first Sunday. Let's see how that works out. Amen. We're going to have registration and we'll have that up for you uh, so that you can register. And, and amen. Amen. The we, we, Bible says forsake not assembling. So if you live here in the local area, I want to see you. I want to see you. God bless you. Tithes and offering. Come on, help me. That's why I need tithes and offering. So come on and help us. God bless you. God bless you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you giving. Amen. She got it up already. There it is. There's the information right there. Thank you, Vien, the, uh, Deaconess Devine. The information is already there. Address is right there. All the information. All, let's get, get your mind ready. Get your mind ready for it. Get your mind ready. Amen. You're used to being at home. I ain't mad at you, but come on. We need The Bible says, forsake not assembling. We need to see you. Amen. Hug. Amen. We need to connect. The saints, we need to see each other. We need to encourage one another. Amen. First Sunday in May. God bless you. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you. Look forward to seeing you in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Please register by the fourth Sunday because we got to have communion. And we're going to have food. We're going to feed you. We're going to have a wonderful time, a wonderful fellowship. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. And J.C. Norman, I wanted to let you and all the brothers from Central Union Mission know, Mike McCall, Matter of fact, he reached out to me today. He reached out to me today. All the men that graduated from the spiritual transformation program. And I am godly proud of you. I am godly proud. Arthur Thomas and Ronnie Thomas and Tony Johnson and, and, and uh, so many of you. Ron Davis down there in South Hill, Virginia. I am, I am godly proud of all of you. I'm godly proud of all of you. Alumni. Amen. April 26 and 27. Thank you, Vini. Amen. She got the information. Right. At Camp Bennett, we're going to be out there Friday and Saturday. I'm going to be there. Pastor Terrell is going to be there. A amen. Amen. Uh, going to have some, amen. Uh, uh, a lot of the guys you all remember, Chaplain Ted Ross, a lot of those guys, amen. You're going to be surprised when you come out. But we're going to have two days of just fellowship, amen, food, going to have some competition. They're going to be playing basketball. They're going to have some Bible classes, amen, on Friday, uh, Friday, April 26th and 27th out at Camp Bennett. Call Mike McCall. You got to register with Mike McCall. Amen. Vinny, I'm going to give you this phone number so we can put that up too. 240-475-9757. 240-475-9757. Uh, brother Mike McCall. Amen. Amen. Camp Bennett. Amen. I look forward to seeing you. I want to see you. All of you brothers that came through the mission, came through the program. Amen. Um, amen. Um, amen. Uh, brother Cook, Dwight, he came through. He ain't going to be able to go. Amen. Because... He got some health issues. Amen. Uh, Clark Himes. Clark Himes. Amen. So many of you. So many of you. We love you in Jesus name. God bless you. Amen. Put that on your calendar. Please put that on your calendars. 
Listen, if you are, are in a house that's food insecure, food insecure, amen. Had a brother showed up here yesterday, as a matter of fact. Showed up here yesterday, amen. But but no, 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 don't just show up. You call first. Call first, amen. Call Minister Thompson, call Sister Deborah Wilson. We'll give you bags of groceries, boxes of groceries. The Lord just blessed us. Another thing, amen. Thank you for your tithes and your offering. We were able to take uh, boxes of food over to Elizabeth House. Dick and John and I, Dick and John, uh, we deliver some food to Elizabeth House. Amen. People are hurting and struggling when it comes to, amen, food and rent and stuff like that. Amen. Well, guess what? If you know of a family, you have a family member that's in a house with no food. Listen, you come get the food. We'll give it to you. You can give it to them. Amen. But don't be in a house with no food. Amen. Uh, give the church a call. We can help you. We can help you. We can help you. Amen. Amen. Um, Prayer requests. Don't forget your prayer requests. Don't forget. Thank you, Mother uh, Carolyn Davis and your team of intercessors. I want to thank all the intercessors out there. Y'all working the overtime. Y'all working double time. Amen. The prayer requests are coming in. Amen. Praise God. This is a new season for City Zion. You know, there's some there's some stuff we're not doing anymore. But you know what? There's some there's some there's a whole lot of stuff we are doing. We're we're doing some new things. God has moved us into a new season, a new station. He's moved us into a new Amen. He's new, moved us into a new season. We are a house of prayer for all nations. We're a house of prayer for all nations. Amen. Thank you for your prayer request. Go to the website. Fill out the prayer request. Fill out the prayer request on the website. Leave your email. Amen. And the intercessors, they're going to take it to the upper room. They're going to take it to the upper room. Amen. What's happening in the upper room? Well, the Bible says Jesus is up there in that upper room. He's gone into the Holy of Holies. Amen. That's where miracles take place. Amen. That's where that's where that's where, where where things happen. Amen. Fill out your prayer request. Fill out your prayer request. Amen. Amen. And we'll 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 wait for that miracle to happen. God bless you. God bless you. That's it. Amen. Go to the website. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. April is is April. Amen. It's April. Got birthdays in April. Oh Lord, have mercy. Hmm. We almost done with April. We almost, we almost done. What's the day? The 10th? Amen. Did I see Jabari in there today? Jabari in the chat? Now, was he in there in the beginning? He been in and out? Uh-huh. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I got my grape juice. What's it? What? Grape juice? What? What? That was on Sunday. That was on Sunday. It's Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, he doing communion now. Let a man examine himself. I got to read that. Lord, that man. Today is Jabari Akil. What's his middle name? Akil? Akil? Jabari Akil Cook. Amen. 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 Him and Vash, that must have been talking because she got me up. She woke me up. You know it's Jabari's birthday today. You know, Jabari, did you tell Vash to tell me that? Did you did you wake up Vash and tell her to tell, tell me it was your birthday? Amen. 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 Happy birthday, Jabari. How old is Jabari? Jabari was born 2001. That make him 23. He's 23 years old. All right, boy. Look at grandmama. That's my grandson. That's my grand. Amen. Godson. Oh, Lord. Oh, that's my godson. Amen. He's just trying to get some money. I don't know about all that. Amen. She already knew. Amen. Well, look, she, she bugging me this morning. She was bugging me this morning. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. Happy birthday. And who else is this week? Who else is this week? Amen. Your mom is on Monday. Yvonne. Yvonne is on Monday. Uh, Deacon John's mother is on Monday. I got anybody else this week? My daughter is uh, Friday, Tahira. If anybody's connected to Tahira, amen. I don't know if she's in the chat, amen. She backslid. She ain't in the chat. She backslid. My daughter backslid. If anybody connected to Tahira, tell her daddy is talking about her, calling her a backslider. Her dad is calling her a back. Tahira is, uh, Tahira is, uh, she is born 1981. Y'all do the math. She 43. She 43. 
You know, her mama been walking around all week talking about, yeah, I was pregnant about 43 years ago. Yeah, I was pregnant 43 years ago. I'm like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Guy that's waiting on her hand and foot. She said, could you change the TV for me? I'm about to kill her dead. I'm about to kill her. What did Whoopi say? Whoopi didn't say I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill her dead. Look, could, could you get me some water? She wait for me to get up. She wait for me to get up. As soon as I look like I'm about to get up. Kill her dad. Yeah, to hear her, she 43. She 43 on the 13th. I believe 13th is Friday. Amen. Amen. Jabari is today. Amen. I got anybody this week? Make sure I got your number now. Make sure I got your time. Amen. Mother Yvonne Edwards is on Monday. Yeah. Steve Grady is Monday. Oh, my. Steve. Steve Grady is Monday. Steve Grady is Monday. Amen. Who else we got? I think that's, I think we got all of them. I think we got all of them. God bless you. Happy birthday, Jabari. God bless you, man. If you was here, I put that money in your hand, Jabari. Thank you. If you was here. If you was here, your mama trying to get it, but I'm binding every buke. I'm binding every buke. Your mama singing Shirley Caesar. Your mama singing. <laughs> Jabari, your mama singing Shirley Caesar. Amen. Happy birthday, Jabari. God bless you, man. God bless you. I ain't put nothing in no envelope. No, uh-uh. Nope. <laughs> I ain't put nothing in the. Woo, Savior. Who is Renee 2383? That's um, Steve Grady's family. They, husband and wife. Amen. Okay. Yeah. All right. God bless you. Amen. Steve. Okay. Amen. And that right, we, uh, Steve. Oh, that's Steve. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. All right. All right, y'all. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Amen. Amen. I think we got everything. I think we got everything. All right. Beloved, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. For your time. I never take it for granted. I never take it for granted. Amen. And I thank you. I thank you. Please, before you leave, hit like and share. Please subscribe. If you're new to our, our, our this channel, new to these platforms, please. On, on, on YouTube, I need you on YouTube and Facebook. We're trying to grow the platform. Trust me. I'm trying to grow the. We're trying to make Jesus's name large. I need you on both platforms because when you do that, that expands, that grows, the, the algorithm, all of that. Amen. We're trying to reach the masses for Jesus Christ. God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name. We love you in Jesus' name. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Please pray for Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the president. Pray for the Bible tells us to pray for our leaders. Pray for our leaders. Amen. Amen. I ain't telling you how to vote. I ain't telling you how to vote. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our leaders. Pray, pray for legislation. Pray for that they forgive student loans. Pray that they forgive. Pray that they pass legislation. That that bridge in Baltimore needs to be rebuilt. Amen. Amen. Pray for. The Bible says when you pray for your leaders, then you and I, we live in peace. We inherit blessings. The Bible says when the righteous rule, when the righteous rule, the people prosper. The people prosper. Call the president. Call his name in prayer. And pray for Jerusalem. Pray for Jerusalem. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for all that our eyes have seen and our hearts have filled. Thank you for Bible study. Thank you for Bible study. Thank you for teaching us deep truths. Thank you. Your word is the sure word of prophecy. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to, to be ready, to be ready for your return. Not getting ready, but to be ready when the trumpet, when the trumpet, when the trumpet calls. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be caught up to meet you in the air. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the Olivet Discourse. Thank you for the five parables that you taught on Tuesday of Holy Week. Tuesday of Holy Week, you, you taught five parables to prepare us, to prepare us, to, to prepare us for your return. To prepare us for your return. Help us to study, Father. Help us to study. Help us not just to hear words, but to be doers. Help us not to go back, to go, Lord, you saved us. You delivered us. Help us not to go back into sin, Father. 
Yeah, keep us with your keeping power, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I love you tonight. Lord, I worship you tonight. We love you tonight. Lord, uh, Lord, we worship you on tonight. Forgive us for sin in Jesus' name. Forgive us for sin in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you tonight. We love you tonight. We worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. Yeah. Help us, help us, Lord, not to just hear words, but make us a doer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Help us to love, help us to love you more than pleasure. Help us not to be, 2 Timothy chapter 3, help us not to be lovers of pleasure more than God. Help us not to be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Mm. Oh, we love you tonight. Help us to learn to fast and pray. Help us to learn to pray. Help us to learn. Help us, Lord, to, to, to study, to show ourselves approved. Uh, help us to learn to meditate on your word both day and night in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to be disciples. Help us to be students. Help us to be servants, servants, servants. So that we can hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to be a servant, Lord, not a sinner, not a sinner. I want to be a servant. Yeah, fill me with your spirit, Lord. Fill me with your spirit. Lord, we love you more. I love you more than this world. You can have this whole world. Give me Jesus. You can have this whole world. I have decided to follow Jesus. Yee! I hear that. I hear that. I hear that in the Holy Ghost. I, have you decided? Have you decided? I hear it. I hear it in the Holy Ghost. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way. Turn from. Repent, repent ye. Repent, repent. Yeah. Call on him while he may be found. All who call on the name of the Lord. Come on, help me call his name Jesus. Help me call his name Jesus. Help me call his name Jesus. Name Jesus. You better call him. Don't call pastor. Don't call bishop. Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, we love you tonight. Fill me with your spirit. We love you tonight. Fill me with your spirit. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. Benediction. I'm getting out. Jew, 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 Jew. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. He can hold you up. He'll hold you up. He'll hold you up. He'll pull on the reins. He'll pull on the reins. Won't let you go too far. He'll keep you. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling. Present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let God's people say amen. amen. Come on, say amen. amen. One more time, say amen. amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord.